to another vlog. Um, I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but I'm a little bit unwell. Um, basically, I've just had my first week back at university, and that week is known as Freshers' Week because there's lots of welcome activities for all the students. Um, everyone from all over the world is coming back to university. Um, all of the students who study there but that brings with it the spread of illnesses from all around the world that are brought to one place and concentrated as students study together and um, it's known as freshers flu so I think I've got freshers flu um, I've got a bit of a tickly throat and a headache but I took some paracetamol I've got a thick woolly <laughs> scarf and I'm going to a vlog with you today anyway so just excuse my unusual voice that will um, in this video However, I am in the town of Sirencester, which I've always wanted to visit. It's known as the capital of the Cotswolds because it's the largest town in the Cotswolds and it really has that traditional, really unique Cotswold style. It's a market town and it's been here since the Roman times and driving in, I've already seen out the window like a cute little market set up and I know there's a Roman museum as well with the artifacts that they found at the um, Sirencester Amphitheatre. So I'm looking forward to having a walk around. I'm going to try not to do too much because obviously if I'm unwell I don't want to push myself just kind of have a cosy day go to a cute coffee shop and have like coffee and cake or tea and just walk around and enjoy it luckily the weather is quite good um, because recently it's been raining but you can see out of the, the window that there's blue skies and it looks like a promising day so yes I'm looking forward to just enjoying it and sharing the town with you because like I said it's not far from Bath it was an hour to drive up here and yeah, so far it looks really cute. I'm looking forward to exploring it. Wish that I could stay Wish for this moment to never go away But it's all in my mind And though I know that there is nothing to find you're a beautiful sight in the summer night And you can't put up a fight in the misty light streets all alone and all you can see thinking about what your life came to be you're a beautiful sight in the summer night and you can't put up a fight in the misty light So it's been a while since I last filmed the bit of footage where I went to Sirencester because basically I just got even worse, my illness got bad and I mean it was okay, I had a high temperature, I just stayed in bed and needed time to rest and recover and I still have a little bit of a sore throat but I'm basically fine now so I feel like there's been something really bad that's just been spreading in England at the moment because everyone I know is ill and it was interesting when I went to uni to work on my project with my group because all of us were just sitting around the table coughing and sneezing and feeling half dead so it was a bit difficult to get any work done through this week but it's the weekend I made it through and today I'm planning to have a little bit of a chill day I'm going to meet my friend for coffee in 15 minutes so I actually need to leave because I need to run off there to meet her someone I haven't seen in a while so it'll be nice to catch up and the weather's not too bad so it'll be nice to sit outside maybe in the sun a little bit and have a nice coffee and then walk around Bath a bit um, I'll bring you along with me and then I'm going to have a cosy evening um, I'll see what I'm going to do today I'm not sure this is a bit of a spontaneous vlog I'm just going to bring you along with whatever I do but yes um, it's been busy and I'm tired so it's hard getting back into the flow of being at university although the project I'm doing at the moment is very fun and I'm enjoying it 
um, the task is to design a new Oxford college. We've had to choose an underrepresented group of students and create a college for them. So my group chose refugees for two reasons. First of all, because obviously um, refugees are underrepresented, it's difficult for them to get into higher education, so it's to encourage that. But then secondly, because when they go to university, they don't have a home to go to in the holidays. So unlike other students who have it as a temporary accommodation for them, it would be full time. That would be their home. So it's quite an interesting concept to go down that route of designing um, not just accommodation, but the whole campus. So an auditorium, library, dining hall, fellows rooms, everything <laughs> for refugees. And that was a really interesting route to go down. Um, like I said, I've only just started the project. so. Uh, it's just getting ideas flowing and <laughs> as a group we just stick massive pieces of paper on the wall and scribble on ideas but it's so fun I kind of missed that as, as hard as studying architecture is because compared to other courses it's known as a very intensive like it takes all your time up <laughs> every day all day I'm just in the studio so it's quite a work heavy course but on the other side I love the creativity I love getting stuck into a project and drawing things and designing so I'm enjoying it. I know it will get more intense as I go along but for now I'm just going to enjoy the process and yes I'm enjoying being back at uni. Also I was a little bit apprehensive about starting at Bath again because I haven't been in person on campus in so long because in first year that's when Covid started in February, March and the lockdown started and um, my first year was cut short, I mean I carried on with the course working from home, second year was all online, third year I was in Paris, so fourth year, it was my first time back on campus since first year, so I feel like a new student at Bath, which is a bit strange considering I'm in my graduation year, but it's been okay, <laughs> it's been nice meeting new people and making new friends because I didn't know that many people from my course, and yeah I'm settling in well so I'm happy. But anyway, I've got to rush off for coffee with my friend and yes, I'll take you along and hopefully we can explore Bath a little bit and see what it looks like in the autumn because I think that Bath is at its best in the autumn. It's such a cosy town, um, well city, <laughs> it's got really cosy vibes and the coffee shops and the aesthetic of it is just amazing at this time of year, it's my favourite. So I hope I can share some of its beauty with you too. So let's go. my friend for a coffee. Um, I had a mocha in a coffee shop that I've never been to before. It's called Quiet Street Cafe and it's really cute. I've passed multiple times and I always wanted to try it out so today I had the opportunity to and then we went for a lovely walk up to Alexandra Park which is um, one of the best viewpoints in Bath. It's got an amazing view over the city and the skyline and it was just really good um, and lovely to catch up. I love um, friends who even if you haven't seen them in a long time because it's been um, nearly a year since I last saw this friend but when you meet them and it's like nothing has changed it's like you saw them yesterday and you can just chat for hours that's the best kind of friendship so it was a really lovely day um, and now I'm a bit tired because like I said I've just been ill and I've just gone on a long walk so I'm really exhausted so I'm going to have a cozy evening scrapbooking and I haven't scrapbooked in oh my gosh when is the last time I scrapbooked because I went to Paris on an exchange and I didn't bring my scrapbooking stuff with me because I have a massive box and I had too much stuff as it was that I brought with me, so it just wasn't possible for me to bring my stuff. And then since I've come back from Paris, I haven't had time to scrapbook. I've been busy with other things. Now that it's getting into a colder, cosy season, I am <laughs> I'm craving some scrapbooking time. So I've got out my box, and I'm going to have a look through and see what I have, because to be honest, I probably can't remember all of the supplies that I have in there. Have a look and get a nice cup of tea and some snacks and just scrapbook, put some music on, that's the plan for this evening. So this is my crate of <laughs> scrapbooking supplies, it's very big, this is why I couldn't bring it with me because it's in a massive Fortnum & Mason's um, 
wicker basket one of the picnic baskets but it's just filled with supplies and it is filled to the brim like <laughs> I basically save rubbish and my family always tells me off for hoarding things because I have you can see like random tea um packets and things and like tissue paper and underneath it's just lots and lots of things because the best scrapbooking things are the things that you find on a day-to-day -day basis and collect and you need a wide range of things because obviously depending on the aesthetic you're going for on that page you need to have things that color scheme that style so I just have a lot of things in this box and I'm going to just start sourcing through it a little bit and choose what I'm going to do today so within the box I have other boxes <laughs> um, and I guess I just did that to try to organise things so I wouldn't have so many little bits of paper that were just floating around. Um, but yeah, I remember in my first and second year of uni I used to spend hours upon hours just scrapbooking. Because I like art but sometimes you just don't have the energy to do something that's too intensive like a painting or a drawing, especially when I spend all day drawing things for architecture, I want to do something a bit different. Um, I'll see if I can show you some examples of the kind of scrapbooking I did because I have my old scrapbooks here. Uh, oh wow. <laughs> There's not many pages left of this one. I'm going to have to start getting new books. But yeah, this is a lovely notebook that I got from Sainsbury's one year and that's what I use for it. Um, and I do them by themes as well. So I have Christmas themed pages I'm looking through now. Oh my gosh, I forgot about all of this. Um, autumn themed pages. Yeah, and I even used to press flowers, which I'd collect and use for my scrapbooking. So I have lots of different themed ones, like this one is more of a countryside theme. It's got um, a poem, a Mary Oliver poem that I found in a magazine and put in. That's another thing that I collect, magazines. Not to read through them, but just to cut them up. Um, This, so the other one was more of a pink tone, this is more of a blue tone page. And I collect like paint samples from stores and things like that and different stickers and just anything that I get my hands on and I cut it up and <laughs> make scrapbooking pages with it. Here there's a lovely one as well with some lace and that's the kind of thing I enjoy doing. This is my second scrapbook. My first one was a notebook from Jack Wills. <laughs> with pheasants on it, it was a really beautiful one as well, that is full, and you can see how thick it is because obviously this stuff takes up lots of <laughs> thickness. So yeah, that's the kind of thing I like to do in my free time. And they're basically mood boards that I put together with little clippings and um, some of them have more writing as well on them, so I'll put in quotes from books that I've read or, um, I don't know, little drawings and sketches, there's all sorts in here, like on this first page I've got a little drawing of a pheasant that I did myself. <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of like reminding myself of what I used to do, because like I said it's been so long since I made any of these, this one is more of a neutral coloured one. This one is more of a travel one and it's got postcards that I've collected on holiday. That's another thing I do when I travel, I always buy postcards from each place I go to because I have a travel book as well where I um, have like tickets and things from my travels but I also use them in my scrapbooks, like this one. So yes, I'm going to first go and make some snacks and um, a cup of tea and then I'm going to crack on with this. I'm actually really excited to get back into scrapbooking again because I missed it. So it's going to be a really lovely cosy evening. Cornelia, you are one who will survive. When time's been bad, you put smiles on everyone. of you and of all I should have done As you can see I'm starting to 
get everything out, just remind myself of what I have. I have lots of sort of scraps of wrappers, tissue paper. I have lots in here that I've been starting to sift through. I have a massive collection of postcards. I have art that I've collected from properties where I've seen the art in museums. I always pick up cards of my favourite paintings, which I use in my scrapbooking. And then I have some random postcards from <laughs> different places I've been to so lots of English themed ones interiors exteriors some more paintings these are from when I went to John Constable's house which is in Essex and um, he was a famous painter who did really beautiful paintings classic afternoon tea here and then yeah some more wrappers and things and some magazines I just need to sift through and normally how I start is I choose something that would be like the base of my scrapbooking so for example if I wanted to use this postcard and then I would choose things that go with it whether it's textures colors patterns and that's how I build the page so um, I also have some um, Polaroids I've taken on travels that are ones that I don't really use for anything else that I'll possibly integrate into it but um that's quite a nice one actually this is from um a chateau in the loire that i went to um i can't remember the name of the chateau <laughs> um but yeah anyway lots and lots of postcards oh this is chateau de chenonceau i remember the name of this one <laughs> this was a very beautiful one but basically yeah some random art leaves for craft things i have metro tickets i have all sorts so i'm going to start working on this and update you. But yeah, I'm looking forward to starting to get the page together because I missed this, it's nice. Um, it's a great way to spend an evening, great way to de-stress. Um, for any of you maybe who are looking for a creative activity to deal with stress, I would recommend scrapbooking. But yeah, I'm just spread out all over the floor working on this. Well, for the color of your skin. later I finished a page and um, I'll show it to you now so the theme of this double spread is kind of like afternoon tea because I, I ended up using this card that I showed you at the beginning because I just really like it and I had quite a few things that match the color scheme so the theme is afternoon tea slash like love letters and um, so because I found this little um, part that I cut out of a National Trust property leaflet which said summer romance so then I kind of went with the two so here's like a page that I've ripped out of a book I mean this is a book that I um, it was like a sample book, I didn't actually rip out an actual book because I would never have the heart to do that. Um, and then I wrote love letters, there's like a lovely table with flowers, so kind of Jane Austen themed I guess, and like the envelope. Um, and here's a little Polaroid of Monet's gardens in Giverny, so like the water lilies and the weeping willow. And I've got like um, China there and then here as well. And then here, it's kind of carrying on with that theme, it's afternoon tea, and there's a lovely quote which says, To romanticise the world is to make us aware of the magic, mystery, and wonder of the world. It is to educate the senses, to see the ordinary as extraordinary, the familiar as strange, the mundane as sacred, the finite as infinite. Which I love, I wrote that in click free. Um, and yeah, I've got some like tea, don't know what you call them, tags, and this little paint smudge, which I cut out of a magazine, and yeah, I just... I'm quite happy with it. I also have some pressed flowers here, 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 and here. And then I've got this little tea bag thing. And this brand of yoga tea, each one has a little quote on, and this one says, happiness is when you do things for others. So I just feel like everything goes together quite nicely, and I'm happy with this page. So I just got a bit carried away and went down a rabbit hole of doing a second <laughs> scrapbook page. So I thought I would show you because it's slightly different from the last one. And yeah, I'll just show you. So this one that I did is actually Italy themed, so it's got, you know, the sea, um, some little quotes that I've cut out of magazines there and there, and this one says, set on a private bay on the scalloped coastline, this was another serene spot with barely a sound on the breeze apart from the gentle lapping of water on the wooden jetty, which I just thought was really um, atmospheric, I loved it, 
and I've got some palm trees, a Vespa, red lipstick, um, pizza, it's just, um, you know, a very, this one's a bit more simple, but um, I just liked how everything fit together quite well. And then this is another quote that I wrote, it says, nostalgia, it's delicate but potent. In Greek, nostalgia literally means the pain from an old wound. It's a twinge in your heart, far more powerful than memory alone, a feeling of a place where we ache to go again. So obviously, because I miss Italy, <laughs> um, I would like to go back, that's kind of the inspiration for this page and I love it. So yes, um, it was a nice creative session. Now I have a lot of mess to tidy up. <laughs> so I'll be spending a while putting all of that way back in the box, but I'm glad I did this because it's been a while and it feels good. <laughs> so I hope you are inspired to maybe make your own scrapbooks um, and collect little bits and bobs that you find, wrappers, leaflets, magazines, and just try to put them together in a pretty page. It's like a paper version of a Pinterest board, basically. So on Pinterest, I like to do similar things, kind of have aesthetic boards. I put together pictures around a theme, and this is the paper version of that, but I find this more satisfying. And it's nice to get away from a screen sometimes as well. So yeah, I would definitely recommend it. But um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time. Bye.